I love crackle. And I think the reason I love it so much is because I just love texture. I love texture and I love interest and interesting, you know, backgrounds and things like that. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. And hopefully I can kind of um, not only educate you on crackle medium and um, my favorite crackle medium and why I love it. And like I said, my technique might be a little bit different than what you've seen before. Um, uh, and then I'm going to show you how beautiful it's going to look when we apply napkin art over crackle medium, okay, over crackle technique, I should say, over the crackle. So I want to show you this is the napkin I'm going to be working with today. Any daisy lovers out there? Y'all, daisies are, I think, my most favorite flower. I just love them. They're just happy and they're just so pretty. So this daisy napkin, just in case, if you are in my napkin club, okay, this daisy napkin is going to be in your March bundle, which is going to ship on March 6th. So you get to look forward to this beautiful daisy napkin coming. Look how pretty it is. Look at all those beautiful images. Our March napkin bundle. Um, I have a napkin club, by the way, if you don't know that already. Um, it's a subscription group. So you get a unique bundle of napkins every single month. You get put into a private Facebook group. That's our little hangout. And then I go live in that group every week and I show them different things that they can make with their napkins or share different artsy techniques. We have a ton of fun in the napkin club. So we do have a few spots that have opened up. So if you are interested, um, let us know. Just let us know in the comments and Cheryl will send you a link to get more information. If you want to get uh, this beautiful daisy napkin, which will be in the March bundle. The March bundle is called Beautiful Blooms beautiful blooms. It is all about our love of flowers, right? It's all spring. It's so pretty. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I'll be doing the live reveal um, of this bundle next Wednesday night. And I don't recall what that actual date is, but next Wednesday evening. <laughs> okay. You love daisies, Yvonne? I do too. I do too. I just love them so much. So I thought this would be a really pretty one to work with. And, um, and then we're going to, we're going to kind of, you know, I'm going to kind of play here for a little bit. We're going to talk about the crackle and just talk to you about why I love it so much and kind of why I do, why I apply it the way that I do. Okay. You can't wait to get the March bundle. It is going to be a gorgeous, beautiful bundle. I cannot wait. Oh, that's March 1st. Okay. That's perfect. That's perfect. Wednesday, March 1st will be the live reveal. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Looks like we have a lot of people watching, which is wonderful. Again, welcome to Craft and Chat today. I'm so happy that you're here. I um, want to show you the surface I'm going to be working on uh, today. It is just a chunky canvas. Okay. You can see it's a wood canvas, but do you see how it's wider? Um, I call these chunkies. So this is a six by six by one and a half. And y'all, if you can find these lots of places, we have a few on our, in our online store, but you can find these at um, Hobby Lobby, at Michael's, you can find them at Walmart, um, they're in, of course, Amazon, <laughs> right, where you can find all the things if you ever need them or ever want them. And so, sorry, y'all, I think I have an eyelash. Let's just, we got to take care of this. There we go. There we go. Now I can get back to business. It was bothering me. <laughs> yes. So I love these chunky canvases. I love them because they'll stand on their own and they just make great little shelf sitters. Um, they look really good. If you have, if you're into tiered trays, like I am um, just creating little spring vignette, vignettes, um, putting them on a desk or, you know, just anywhere really. And I think the daisies are so pretty. They'll be pretty and cheerful to just have wherever you want. Okay. These also make really great gifts. All right. It's a great size for a gift. So this is what I'm going to be working on today. Now, one advantage to using the canvas today to show you the crackle technique is that it's already white. It's already white. It's already kind of pre-primed. So I just don't have to, I don't have to worry. If you do have a natural canvas, 
something that's not pre-primed that's natural. Sometimes if I'm, if I'm working with a natural canvas, I'm not even sure that they make a natural canvas in a chunky. Um, I might paint it white just to give it some, you know, stability, just to kind of strengthen up that natural fabric. But I think pretty much all the chunkies I found have already have this, you know, kind of pre-primed canvas on top of it. Okay. All right. You can find them in my canvas only tote bin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we're starting with a pre-primed chunky canvas, right? So I was going back and forth over this because this crackle medium, this crackle is going to show through my napkin art. And so I was trying to think, did I want it to be like a, a soft contrast? A soft contrast would be where um, I use two, two colors that are just softer. They're, you know, they're not going to contrast as much. Like I might've used like a soft pale mint or soft green with white, but I decided since I'm showing this to you and I really, really want you to be able to see the effects, I'm going to go for a high contrast. So a high contrast would be something like this right here, right? See high contrast right? So you're definitely going to be able to see the crackle effect going on between these colors. So the colors I'm using today is um, the green I'm using. It's called Hollow Hill, but you could use whatever color you want. This color is going to be my base coat color. So lesson number one, your base coat color, okay, for me, it's going to be this called Hollow Hill. It's a green. It's a really pretty green, um, is going to be what shows through the cracks, okay? My top coat color is going to be simplicity. It's going to be this pretty white. So the white is going to crackle and then the green is going to show through the crackle. Okay. So I want to make sure you get that. So I'm the very first thing I'm going to do is just put a top coat of paint. Isn't that a pretty green? I think it's so pretty. We're going to do a top coat of paint on our canvas and I'm going to do the sides first. Uh, I am using country chic paint, which is a chalk, and mineral based paint. It is my favorite paint. I use it for everything. And this, this is only going to require one coat. I mean, it's literally just that's all we need for this base coat. So as I'm putting this on, let's just talk through this again. So the green, it's what's going to show through the cracks, right through the cracks. If I wanted white to show through the cracks, I wouldn't have to paint at all because my canvas is already white. But I want white to be the top coat because I'm going to napkinize it. Napkinize is my word for anything I alter, any surface I alter with a napkin. And I hope to get credit for it one day in the dictionary. <laughs> All right, so I think you can see that. I'm going to do the sides first and just drop it down. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Sandy. <laughs> and just one quick coat. This is why I just really love the chalk base paints. You can put them on anything. They have a really strong adhesion. So that's why, especially me, because I'm, I like to repurpose. I like to go junking and take old things and give them new life. So I like to use paints that will adhere to anything. So I don't have to do a lot of prep work that way. All right. Really pretty green here. This is going to be so pretty with the daisies. So you can see that it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to go in and do a second coat. This is going to be plenty. Okay. This is going to be plenty for this. Hi, D. I like the word napkinized too, fraps and scraps. <laughs> that is a super cute name. Sorry. Let's put that down. Okay, get the lid on. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and just dry this paint. It is a really pretty color. Do you see why I chose it? I think it's just going to look really pretty with this. Now, remember, it looks really in, intensely green right now. But again, it's only going to show through the cracks. So one coat, and we're good to go.
Well, we're glad you made it too, Sandra. Hi, Kimberly. Welcome to my page. We just got started, y'all. The only thing I've done so far is just paint this chunky canvas. And just one coat. It's really just to get this quick base coat of color on. The other thing I like about chalk paint is it dries really quickly. All right, I think we are good to go there. So our next coat is going to be the Crackle Medium. Okay, so again, because it's just my favorite brand is Country Chic Crackle Medium. Um, I love it. I want to show this to you kind of in the jar, show you what it looks like. And I want to give you this tip. Okay, and this is true of any Crackle Medium. Okay, any Crackle Medium. Don't ever shake it. Don't ever shake it. It's really best to be stirred. Okay, if your Crackle Medium comes in like a squirt bottle, squirt some out into like a little cup or a plastic cup or plastic plate or something and then uh, mix it up okay you don't ever want to shake it if you shake it a lot of times you'll get these little micro bubbles in there and you just it's just so hard to get rid of those little stinkers okay so it really is a good idea to um, mix Okay, much, much better to mix and you'll get a better effect, crackle effect as well. So the next thing I'm going to do, let me cover up that paintbrush so I don't accidentally use it. <laughs> Have you ever picked up the wrong paintbrush <laughs> when you were live? Yeah, yeah, it happens. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first are the sides, just like I did when I was painting. So you can see it's going to get kind of milky looking, but look, it's very, very liquidy. Okay very, very liquidy. And so now I'm just going to put a coat of this on each side. Okay. I'm just going to coat it up and then I'll lay it down. Don't be too skimpy with it. You don't have to flood it, but you know, you want to make sure it looks nice and wet. Get that on there. You don't always have to do the sides, but I wanted to today. My, the ribbon I'm going to use uh, isn't the full width of the canvas, so I thought it would be pretty to crackle the sides. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the top here. And again, just want to make sure it looks really nice and wet. Um, it does not matter the direction of your brush at this stage. It will matter the directionality um, when you put the top coat on. Okay. And let me swipe the sides because usually I get a little, a bit, little drippy going over the edge. Okay, so that's how you're going to apply your crackle medium. All right. Now, yeah, it really is. I promise it's gonna make a big difference if you stir and don't shake your crackle medium. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to show y'all is, or I want to tell you, is this is where I kind of differ from some other crafters and makers and even manufacturers. <laughs> some, some manufacturers of crackle medium will tell you to put your top coat on when um, the crackle medium gets sticky or kind of sticky or tacky before it dries all the way. Um, I actually like to dry it a little more than that stage. Um, it's actually okay with me even if the whole thing dries before I put the paint on. So because we're live, I'm going to dry this. I'm going to dry it, you know, as, as much as I can. Um, and then we're going to put our crackle, uh, our top coat on, on the crackle. And then we'll talk about that too, because that seems to cause people a little bit of angst because they're like, well, why does it, why do I get small crackle here and large crackle here? So we're going to talk through that. Um, Chris says, I've seen some people use the Mod Podge as a crackle base. They paint over it wet and it crackles as it dries. Mod Podge does not always 
crackle. It's, it's temperamental. It doesn't always crackle, but like Elmer's glue, if you want to try that technique, it's actually going to be better to use like Elmer's glue. Here's the reason why I don't use the Elmer's glue method often. It, yes, it does crackle. Yes, it will dry and it will kind of separate and it will crack, but it doesn't really hold well to your surface. It doesn't really hold well. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really cure and harden and hold well to your surface. And for me, um, I want my projects to last like a long time. I want them to be really good quality. I want them to last for forever. If I'm going to gift it to someone, I don't want stuff to start peeling off later. Um, I live in Texas where it gets extremely hot and sometimes it's the, it's the heat or it might be the humidity or something like that. So that's just something to consider. Um, if you're working on a budget, then definitely, if you want to try the glue technique, I definitely recommend that you try it. It is a little temperamental, temperamental with the weather, temperatures, you know, just things like that. Whereas the Country Chic um, Crackle Medium, it's probably, and I'm not, I'm not doing this to, to like be salesy. I'm doing this just because I've tried just about everything out there on the market. This is the best. It really is the best. I've had days where it was pouring down rain and it will still crackle. I've had days where it's 110 degrees or high humidity and it will still crackle. So I haven't ever really had any problems with it ever reacting and doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> okay. So that's why it's my favorite. I don't want to risk something not working well. Um, I don't want to have to have a do over and I want to make sure the projects really hold up. That's really, that's what it is for me. So I, uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is your heat tool. If you have a heated craft gun or, an, or another type of heat tool or heat gun, you can use this on your crackle medium to help it dry. Okay. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. What is the name of the green paint? The green paint I'm using is called hollow hill and it's country chic paint hollow hill. <laughs> What was the, uh, oh, Vicki says Tracy's method works every time. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, you know, when you, that's the thing about it is like the things that I want to share with y'all during these crafting chats are like, I want to share my favorite things, my favorite techniques, the things that work, the products that work every single time. Right. Um, it's just a way for me to get on here and, and have some fun, craft with y'all, but also give you really good information, right? That's important. You need to get good information because I want your projects to turn out fabulous. The name of the crackle medium I'm using is Country Chic, Country Chic <laughs> Crackle Medium. And um, Cheryl is posting a link right now. It just popped up in the comments. Yes, Debbie, it will work with acrylic paint. So if you need to use acrylic paint, that is just fine. Make sure you're using, you're working on a surface though that will accept acrylic ink. I mean, acrylic paint, sorry. <laughs> so I think you can kind of, you might be able to tell that it's starting to dry. Obviously I did my sides first. So I'll kind of dry them this way. Hello, Carolyn from Oklahoma. <laughs> We're glad you're watching. If you just uh, tuned in, I have put a base coat of paint of uh, this pretty green color on my chunky canvas. And now I put crackle medium, or I next I put crack crackle medium, and now I'm just drying it. I'm drying this crackle medium. You can kind of see, do you see how it's starting to, to dry when it kind of starts to turn matte? That's when it's starting to dry. I have not used the crackle paste, but I think I need to. You're the, you're not the first one um, to, um, to mention that to me. So I, I'm thinking I need to get some and try it out and see how it works because I, the paste would make, give you even more texture. So I do like that. That could be fun. <laughs> Darlene. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to sit this down. See how it's drying? You see? All right. Let 
Looking good here. I think I can probably go ahead and do the sides. So one thing I want to tell you, I'm going to change my screen here in just a minute. But one thing I wanted to tell y'all is this next step, the next step that we're going to do is to apply the top coat. So I get questions about this all the time. Someone will get to this stage and they'll be like, Miss Tracy, my crackle medium didn't work. There's no cracks. There won't be any cracks at this stage. Okay. There won't be any. The reaction doesn't happen until you put the top coat of paint on. Then it immediately, the reaction immediately starts to happen. Okay. Now, the reason that sometimes you get small, I call it cracklage. Okay. We're going to call it cracklage. If you get small cracklage in some areas and large cracklage, okay, big cracklage, large cracklage in other areas, it's typically because of the paint being thin. The thinner your paint is on, the thinner the crackle. The thicker the paint is on, the thicker the crackle. The thicker the paint is on, though, the longer it's going to take to to dry, right? I personally like it when a project has both because it looks like it's naturally aged, right? It looks like it's naturally aged over time. Something that's naturally aged, you know, is, is not going to be consistently the same kind of crackle all over, right? It's going to be different. So when I put the top coat on, you're going to see this because honestly, it's going to start reacting immediately, immediately. So the reason, this is the reason why we have to be careful when we put the top coat on. Okay, so we're going to pretend like my hand is this canvas for a moment. Okay, you're going to see me do this here in just a second, but you're going to dip into the paint, right? And the trick is you need to go one direction. When your hand lifts, just turn the brush over and finish out the stroke. Okay, you can, you can dip back into your paint as many times as you need to. You cannot go back over your strokes, Okay. Because I'm telling you, the reaction starts almost immediately. So what happens is if you go down and then you go up, you're gonna, your paint is going to cover that crackle effect. Okay? So it's important to go pick a direction, stick with that same direction. And now I'm going to model this for you. You're going to see me actually do it. Okay? So I'm going to do this with white. All right? And what color am I going to see in the cracks? In the cracklage. Anybody? We'll have a little pop quiz here. <laughs> we'll see who's listening. <laughs> what color am I going to see in the cracklage? Mm, I'll take a drink while I'm waiting. I know there's a delay between when I talk and you talk. What color am I going to see? There come all the colors. Like about 20 greens just popped up on my screen. <laughs> Maybe more than that. That's right. The green is going to show through the cracklage. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to use a fairly wide brush here. I guess this is probably one inch or maybe a little larger. I don't know. And do you see how I'm really kind of loading up some paint on this? So let's watch on the side here. I'm going to kind of kind of spread this out. I'll do it in two coats. When my hand naturally kind of lifts, I'm turning my brush. I didn't get enough here. Okay, so let's go over here. And again, just going to kind of go down. Every time my hand naturally lifts up, I'm just going to turn it. And I want you to see the crackle's already starting. Look, do you see it? It's already starting. It's going to be so pretty. So let's keep going here. So stroke. Right? Don't go back over. Now I'm getting kind of drippy right here, so I'm going to just kind of clean up that little drip there. And I'm going to keep working my way. 
around. The sides are a great place to practice because they're not going to matter as much uh, because we'll have some ribbon on this canvas, you know. This is a project that you could practice on, just maybe some little canvas boards or something. You can actually crackle anything, any kind of, it, it, especially if you're using the chalk paints, you can crackle over a watering can. You can crackle um, over fabric. You can crackle over plastic. I mean, it's really just making sure that you're using a paint that will adhere to whatever your surface is. So just, Go down. Now, the other great thing about the chalk paint is it self levels. Okay, it will self level. So if you wind up getting kind of a, a little um, paint line, a little kind of blobby paint line or something like that, if you will just be patient and wait, uh, the paint will self level. So let's look at that crackle over here now. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So it's crackling really well. Now, I want you to see this. If you'll be patient and wait, it's hard to be patient. I'm the, I'm the, I am the world's most impatient crafter. I, I admit to it. It is hard to be patient. But if we'll wait, a lot of this paint will just self-level and then you won't have to worry about it. If you just can't wait, if you just can't wait, you can come in and apply your heat tool. And I'm going to do it on this side just a little bit. I'm hoping that you'll be able to watch what happens. If you, when you apply your heat tool, once the cracklage has already started, it, it becomes more defined. Oh, come on. Nope. Zoom in on the, there we go. I got to get it to zoom in on the crackle and not the heat gun. <laughs> I'm just using it right in kind of in that area right here. Do you see how it became more chippy, more crackly, right? But if I go down here, like on this little bubble, little kind of blob of paint right there, if I dry it too soon, it won't self-level. It will just kind of stay like that. But that's not the end of the world either. Because once everything is dry, you can always come back in with a little bit of sandpaper or a sanding block and sand down some of those little paint ridges. Okay? So it's really pretty. That pretty... So it's crackling pretty nicely. Let's check out this side. Isn't that great? So do you see how the thicker, I did a little thicker paint here. It's a little thinner on this side. There's a couple little paint blobbies right there. That's why it's going to be thicker in places and thinner in places. Okay, so see like this little paint blobby right here, this little paint, paint ridge right there. If I'm patient, that will self-level. Okay? That will self-level. All right. So I'm going to put this down now. Uh, here. Um, actually, let's do it here. Sorry. I'm trying not to touch, and I just touched it right there. Okay. Try not to touch it because then you'll get your fingerprint in it. <laughs> Yes, I'm using crackle medium. I haven't done any Mod Podge yet. Oh, it's so fun. Well, that's good. The folk art actually is my that if if for some reason um, before I started actually using the um, country sheet crackle, most of the time I would actually use the folk art and it did pretty well for me most of the time. So that's good to know that that's working well for you too. All right, here we go. We're going to do this top coat. I'm going to switch my screen here. Okay. All right, we ready? Ready, Freddy? So I'm going to load up some paint, right? And I'm going to kind of push, push your brush down, make sure you're getting plenty of paint out. And I'm just going to start going down. One stroke. 
trying not to go back over my stroke over my strokes do you see there's this little teeny dot right there or I missed I'm just going to put the corner of my paintbrush in there so it's okay to do that just don't don't put a stroke back over it And if it's a project, like I said, if it's a project that you want larger cracks on, larger cracklage, you're going to want to put thicker, a thicker top coat and just be patient and allow it to dry. That's the hard part. That's the hard part, or at least it's the hard part for me. Okay. And I'm just kind of touch, tapping that side for drips, if I have any. All right, and see, it's already crackling away. Have you ever used regular acrylic paint? Yes, you can use regular acrylic paint. Just make sure that whatever your surface is, that uh, acrylic paint will adhere to it, okay? But yes, you sure can. All right, I'm gonna let it just kind of do its thing. If I'm if I am the impatient crafter that I am, let me go back here. <laughs> if I am the impatient crafter that I know that I am, um, what you can do is like a, even at this stage, I try not to apply heat to it until it started to crackle on its own, right? If I once I've got a good crackle going, a good crackle on its own going then I can come over here and go ahead and put heat to it to help it dry. It also helps to activate the crackle even more. But if I do that, right, remember these little ridges? These little ridges are going to dry in place because I haven't given it enough time to just self-level, okay? So while this is kind of sitting here and kind of doing its thing, I would pick it up. But if I pick it up, I'm going to touch the sides. So just I'll do that here in just a minute. I'm going to start, well, here, let me put the lid on my paint. And don't be surprised if you have to go in, you know, if we have to at the end, if there's a little, a little spot here or there we have to touch up, we can always do that with a small paintbrush, okay? So I'm going to clean my hands, and I'm going to start getting my napkin art ready while this is setting up. And I would love to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, either works well. It just depends. Are you in a hurry? Is there something else you can go do while you just wait a little bit? It is. It's hard. It's hard for me to wait. A lot of times I'll dry it. And then if I need to, I'll go back in and I'll sand off um, some of those little ridges. And sometimes I don't sand the ridges at all. I just leave them. It just depends, especially like here, because we're going to put a napkin on top of this. Um, you know, so it just, I don't know. It just depends what you want to do. Right? <laughs> Okay, so this is the napkin that I'm using, this beautiful daisy napkin. I think it's so gorgeous. Let me hold it up so you can really see all the detail in it. So pretty. And as I mentioned, when we first started our craft and chat, this napkin is going to be in the March bundle for my napkin club. So all of you members out there, get happy because you're going to get this beautiful daisy napkin. All right, let's do... Which side do I want to do? I'm going to do this side. Not that it matters. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come in here and cut a, a square off of my napkin. So one napkin, if you were doing these canvases, I mean, one napkin would give you four canvases. Hi, Lo. I'm so glad you're here watching. Y'all, that's Lo right there with Passion and Growth. She is one of my business besties. Okay. All right, perfect. So this is the square that I'm going to use. Daisies are my favorite flower, too. Um, let's see. Let's do, y'all know, let's see who knows their movies right? What movie is this from? Daisies are the friendliest flower. 
What movie is that from? <laughs> I'm going to use my lick and stick method right here to tap. And I'm going to press really hard in the corner of this napkin and then watch what happens to see. It's just going to come apart super easy, just like that. There's one ply. We have to take the plies off the napkin, y'all. You've got mail. You got it, jury. <laughs> that's right, Darlene Corby. That's one of my favorite movies. I think that's just such a, I could probably just watch that movie. I don't know. That's a good crafting movie. You could be crafting while you watch it. So I've got to get the second ply off. Generally, most of the napkins in the napkin club, club bundles are, are going to be three ply. Um, if ever so often, if there's one that's only two ply, I'll make sure and let everybody know. But most of the time, it's three ply. So we've got to get those plies off. We've got to get those plies off because if we go to put this napkin onto this beautiful crackled canvas and it already has another layer of paper underneath it, the tissue underneath it, the second we get ready to start napkinizing, right, and de decoupaging it on, the top layer tries to lift off. And that's the layer with the artwork, right? That's the art layer. And so I just don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to have, have that creative heartburn. <laughs> yes, love sleep. Sleep is in Seattle too. I wish they'd start making more movies like that again. <laughs> okay, so I want you to look back over here at my canvas. Do you notice how some of the lines are minimizing? You can still see them kind of up here at the top and at the bottom, but do you see through the middle? They're minimizing because the paint is leveling. The paint is self-leveling. That is a characteristic of chalk and mineral based paints. That is just, it's just, it's just an awesome thing because you can be a super messy painter, but if you just be patient, let the paint kind of settle and it's like, oh, the lines are gone. Okay. <laughs> All right, so there is this part of our napkin. I'm just going to stick it right over here. The other thing I want to do today is I'm going to add a couple little bees. I, I like bees too. I think bees are really cute, but I thought it would be fun if we added a couple of little bees. These are from some past napkins. I'm just going to come in here and kind of do what I call a loose fussy cut. But I want to show you something because... um. I have seen people just almost, you know, just when you're doing a loose fussy cut, it's like bubbling. It's like you're bubble cutting around. Okay. I'm going to do it right over here so you can see. So I'm not really touching the image. I'm kind of just bubbling around it. There's a little foot thingy there, whatever that is. Okay. So I, on this side, do you see how I cut it right on the wing? That's not really what I want you to do. I want you to do more like this. Okay, you're gonna, sorry. You're gonna bubble cut. Look around those little feet of the, of the bee. You don't have to cut into all of those details. In fact, even these little, the little antennas, you don't have to really cut into those either because we can always come back and add those. So watch what I'm gonna do. We can add those with our pin. I'm just gonna trim them right off. We can go back and add those in on our own, okay? So when I say loose fussy cut, that's what that is to me, okay? That's what that is to me. It is kind of bubble cutting around, especially when you have a white base background because most of the time that background, it just disappears. It's just going to meld into our, our background on the canvas and the other napkin, and we just don't have to worry about it. So don't kill yourself trying to truly fussy cut all the little things. Bubble cut. Bubble cut around it. I call it a loose fussy cut. Okay. And I'm just going to take those little antennas. When my kids were little, they would get confused and they would call them antlers. So sometimes just because it just always brings back a memory for me, I'll call them antlers too. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Now I'm really getting impatient because now, you know, my napkin is done. Uh, one more thing about fussy cutting your napkins. I do them when they're together. Okay, it's just easier. The, the napkin has a little bit more strength to it with all the layers. 
and then I separate them after I've cut them. Lick and stick. If the lick and stick method doesn't work for you, you could use a couple pieces of washi tape or, um, you know, scotch tape, painter's tape. Sometimes if I get a stubborn layer, I'll, I'll use a pin, like a straight head pin. Like a, you know what I'm talking about? Just a, like a normal pin, pearl head pin. All right, and I got both the layers off of my little bees here. All right, so I need to put the bees somewhere where they will not fly away. So I'm gonna put them over here and put my scissors on top of them. So when I can't find them here in a few minutes, <laughs> Y'all tell me, you put your scissors on top of them, okay? I don't want it to fly away. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry. I'm going to go ahead and dry. Now watch. I don't know if you can see it this close. Let me see if I can go ahead and pick it up. Okay. I'm going to bring it in close, but I don't know if you can tell, but when the heat hits the crackle, it's going to make it even more defined. Almost makes it. Um, it's not chipping off. It's not going to chip off, but it just gives it more of that really true crackle chippy look. A lot of my lines went away. There's just a few here, so it'll be fine. And again, you're going to, it's going to be very, very easy to see that some areas, do you see how I'm keeping the heat really close? Just kind of keeping it close. I just love how that looks. So see, some areas are going to be a little thinner. Some are going to be thicker. Let me go ahead and do the sides here too. Janet wants the napkin club link. Okay, Cheryl's, Cheryl's posting it. <laughs> I know, the crackle look is so fun, y'all. And like I said, you can crackle all kinds of things. It just doesn't have to just be canvas, right? So fun. In fact, um, well, I didn't crackle this other piece, but let's see. Do I have any other crackled stuff here behind me? I don't think I do. Look at that good crackle, cracklage. Now see like this little corner piece where it's, where, you know, I could just take a paintbrush and kind of paint over that little, little spot right there if I need to. Make sure everything's really good and dry. Okay, it's drying really nicely. So like I said, just try to be patient. If you can be patient, those lines, that paint will self-level. Right there, I'm just gonna kind of scrape my fingernail through it. Okay, let's see if we have questions. Oh, thank you, like my hair. I just got it colored yesterday. It needed it so bad. Um, we do a lot of fun things in the napkin club, Gail. That is so true. Okay, Susan says, if attempting to crackle a metal tin that had previously rusted, should I prime it first or chalk, chalk paint alone do the trick? Okay, one of the things I can tell you because as a, as a, as a junker, I love picking up old things and giving them new life and things like that. You do have to be careful about rust. Okay. Rust is, can be a great thing. If you want to keep the rust, I would recommend sealing the can first with just like a clear uh, acrylic spray, just a clear, clear top coat. If you don't want the rust, because what will happen is when the second that, that your paints, um, it will kind of bleed through the paint. 
it will kind of continue to rust through the paint, if that makes any sense, whether it's chalk paint or not. Chalk paint will cover it up, but over time, it's going to start, that rust is going to start coming through the paint. So you would need to seal it first, but if you don't want the rust, if you're trying not to have the rust, lemon juice is the cure. Lemon juice and sunshine helps too. <laughs> Lemon juice, a nice sunny day, but if you'll just let it, if you'll just use lemon juice and um, get a brush after it, let it soak a little bit and then get a brush after it, it's going to clean the rust right up. Okay. It's going to clean the rust right up. All right. If you don't want to mess with that, just a clear spray primer, just a clear primer, just to seal it before you paint it. Okay. Great question. That's a good one. And uh, the Susan says, I so appreciate the info. Proud Napkin Club member. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> You've learned so much. Yeah. Lemon juice um, will take care of your rust. Yeah. You know what else? Just while we're, while we're gabbing, while we're chatting, um, if you ever do furniture pieces, like if you ever get furniture or maybe a, a, I love to repurpose like train cases or small suitcases, things like that. If you ever get a hold of something like that and it has that funky smell in it, like sometimes train cases, when you open them up, I smell, you'll smell cold cream, right? It smells like, like Merle Neumann cold cream or something. Um, that's not so bad. But sometimes you open a drawer or you open up a case and you get that musty, almost kind of dead, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, that dead musty smell. You know what I'm talking about? That musty ooh, kind of smell. Um, kitty litter is the best thing for that kitty litter. So literally you can put kitty litter into, you know, a drawer, a suitcase, something, close it up, let it sit for a while. The kitty litter absorbs, um, the musty smells, the, the icky, icky smells. <laughs> I'm just working on a, um, this is like a, um, oh, I don't know what you call it. It's like, um, it's a heat resistant non-stick mat. It's like the kind that you can even put like in your oven. Um, but it's a heat resistant non-stick craft mat. Okay. 18 by 24. Yeah. Kitty litter is the best. There's lots of Pinterest hacks out there, but I promise I've done it millions of times. Kitty litter is, is the best option. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. So I think we're ready to move on. Are y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's go ahead and move on and let's napkinize this canvas because I'm dying for you to see how it's going to look with the crack ledge coming through. Let's go ahead and look at it up close. I wish I could pass it through the camera to you. I say that all the time. I wish that so bad because then you could really feel it. You could feel the texture. It's awesome. Okay. So this is going to be my napkin. So I'm going to kind of hold it up so you can see. You can already see that the cracks are going to show through it. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous. So to put this on, we're going to be using uh, just Mod Podge Matte. Okay, just Mod Podge Matte, the yellow label. Um, if you have napkinized with me before, you know that I do not like the glossy. The glossy is kind of like a reddish orange label, I think. Um, don't use the glossy. I want to tell you not to use the glossy like ever, but especially don't use it with your napkin projects. The glossy has a tendency to stay tacky, sticky feeling, right? So even after it's dry for, it could be six months and I could have a little canvas on my mantle or something. And even six months later, I'll pick it up and it's kind of sticking, right? It's got kind of a tacky, sticky feel to it. That does not happen with the matte. The matte is more of a satin, smooth satin finish. So it's really, really good for napkins when we're putting them on canvas. Now, there are other mediums that I like to use. Um, the hard coat Mod Podge, I like to use that for certain things. If you stick around, I'm sure there'll be a future craft and chat um, about that. But yeah, there's certain, certain mediums are better for certain things. But for this, Mod Podge Matte is going to be just fine. All right. So I'm just going to put this on the top here. And again, just want to make sure it looks nice and wet. Don't have it be, you don't want it to be too thin. 
And I kind of go both directions here. So let me just kind of hold it in the light. It should look wet and it's hard. There you go. You can kind of see it there. You want to make sure it looks really good and wet. Okay. And then I'm going to put on my napkin. So I have to decide kind of where my napkin's going to be a little bit bigger. And I'm going to sand off the edges. So don't smooth the edges down. I'm going to take a plastic sheet here first. And I'm just going to kind of start in the center. And I'm going to start smoothing to the outside. Don't press down too hard because you don't want to stretch your canvas. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It looks awesome. Now you would see the cracks even more if this can't if this napkin wasn't the soft green color, like if it was white, it would um, it would literally just disappear. But our our daisies are white, so that's why we have this pretty soft green, which I actually really love this color. It's kind of a minty. All right, I think I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to peel this back. You can see the Mod Podge. You see the Mod Podge comes through like that. And then because it does have the crackle on it, this is a great project to use like your chip brush. I didn't put one over here, so let me grab one. So you could use a chip brush if you want to. This is just a natural bristle brush. Don't put anything on it. And you would be pouncing up and down, up and down. And that's just helping that napkin to get down into all of the nooks and crannies of that cracklage. Okay, I'm going to hold it up for you so you can see. Look at that. I mean, tell me that's not gorgeous. No, don't tell me that. <laughs> it's gorgeous, isn't it? If you like this look, you're loving this right now. I love it. I think it's so pretty. Ah, it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to dry it a little bit here on the top. You always want to dry your napkin before you sand off the edges because when the napkin is wet, it's at its most fragile. <clears throat> Sorry. When the napkin is wet, it's at its most fragile, so it could tear. So we want to make sure this is dry. Then we're going to sand off the excess, and we're going to put a light coat of Mod Podge on the top. It's pretty, huh? <laughs> Sue, you're funny. Can we get this napkin if we are in the club? Yes, you're going to get it next month. This is one of the napkins in uh, the Beautiful Blooms bundle that is going to be shipping on March 6th. And it's a great time to get into the club, y'all, because we're going to have, we're, we're filling kind of open spots right now. And then in March, we're going to have a big open, uh, like a big launch for Napkin Club. And then we're not going to open again until August. Okay. So it's a great time. This, this is the time to get in now. And then uh, if you get in now, we'll have your, your bundles will be shipped out on the 6th of March. And then um, we are, I'm doing a challenge workshop that'll be coming out shortly. And then we're going to have a, a large launch. We're, we're making room for more members later in March. And then we'll be completely closed. We won't reopen again until August. <laughs> So come join us. Come join us. There's no cancellation fee. There's no contract. There's none of that. You can come in. If you decide to cancel, we just have to have your cancellation request or you can cancel yourself on the website or email us. We'll take care of it. Um, we just need it in by the first of the next month. So we have a couple days to, can you know, to process cancellations before we start shipping. Yeah. Okay. So let's sand this off. I'm just going to use a little piece of sandpaper here or you can use um, you know, sanding block. Sand up really nice here. You can even sand a little heavier on the corners if you want to.
but it is important to sand it once it's dry. I mean, you know, don't don't try to do it when it's wet. Or it could pull and tear. And this would be the time, like if you wanted to, like look right here. If you like this look, you could come along and kind of sand it even a little, you know, be a little more uh, rough with it, you know, heavier with your sanding. If you want to have that kind of chippy look around the outside edge. If you don't want that chippy look around the outside edge and it happens and you didn't mean for it to happen, um, it's really not a big deal because you can just touch it up with paint. Okay, just touch it up. Okay, let's go ahead now and put our top coat on. We need to protect this beautiful thin napkin art, right? So we're just going to put a quick top coat on. Then we're going to add our bees. So this is going to seal the napkin. It's going to make it, uh, it's going to protect it. It's also going to make the napkin more transparent, which means our crackle is going to show through even more when it dries. Okay, it's gonna look kind of milky, that's expected. And then we're just gonna let that dry. And I remembered where my bees were. <laughs> so here are my little bees. So now I can decide where I want my little bees to go. I could have this one flying, maybe this one's, do I want it on top? That's kind of cute right there, that's a cute spot. And maybe this one's flying here. Let's turn this one like he's flying towards this flower. Come on. Come on, little bee. Okay, a little tiny. And I'm just going to use my chip brush. You could use the plastic wrap or your chip brush, either one. And I'm going to layer those right on top. Oh, I like it. I like it, I like it. Let's dry the bees just a little bit and then I'll put a top coat on the bees. Who's excited to crackle something now? <laughs> You can always practice, just practice on something. I love it. And I just let, I let it be an organic process. I don't try to, I don't try to manipulate it. I don't try to, try to, you know, I just kind of put the paint on and I just let it do what it, what it's meant to do and just take it on. Cause like I said, I really like it when it's not all the same look, you know? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and dry this whole thing now. Because I have another thing I want to show you real quick, and then we're going to finish this off. When That's what we're about to do. We're going to add their antennas, and I'm going to do a little pin mark on their wings. Their wings kind of get lost. So we're going to make their wings stand out a little more. But we've got to dry this. So we're going to do what, what I call pin work. We're going to do some pin work. Now, pin mark is something you never do on a napkin that has not been sealed, okay? What's sealing a napkin? You could spray seal it, but, you know, or light coat of Mod Podge on top, right? <laughs> I love crackle for every season. I don't know. I'm just crazy for it. I'm kind of a crackle junkie. I think it's because I just love texture so much. So the reason that we don't do pin work, and I'll tell you the pin that I'm using here in just a second. The reason we don't do pin work right on top of a napkin that hasn't been sealed is because, this is for my napkin club members, what is a napkin's purpose in life? They'll answer that question here in just a second. A napkin's purpose in life. <laughs> what could cause it to bubble putting the top coat of Mod Podge on? Typically, if you get a bubble on the top coat of Mod Podge, it's because either the bottom coat did not dry all the way or you missed a spot. 
So either the bottom coat didn't dry all the way or you missed a spot. Sometimes you can just kind of smoosh it back down, put a little heavier coat of Mod Podge on the top and let it penetrate the napkin. Yeah. Yes, look at you girls. Yay, that's my napkin club members right there. Um, napkins, are their purpose in life is to absorb. So if you take a pen and you try to draw on a napkin, you're not going to have crisp pen work. It's going to get fuzzy because it's going to, the napkin's going to try to absorb it. So the pens that I use for, that are my favorite, again, sharing my favorites for uh, doing any kind of pen work on um, napkin art is Faber-Castell Pit Pens, P-I-T-T. -T. Um, the one, the, the set that we um the set that we sell this this is my favorite it's this one it's called essential art and i love it because it's got a brush tip oh i don't know if you can sit there we go a brush tip a medium a small and an extra small tip so you can kind of see the difference in the lines over here but it's made with india ink and so when it dries it's steadfast um, it's waterproof. It won't react with water or moisture or anything like that. Again, you don't have to put a top coat on top of your pen work. You don't have to do any of that. So they are great to use. It's a great set and they will last you a very long time if you make sure that you're using them when your top coat is dry. You don't ever want to, also you don't want to try to do pen work on a napkin that's not dry. If the Mod Podge is not dry, it's going to gunk up on the end of your pen. OK, if that ever happens, just get a baby wipe and clean the nib of your pen well. OK. Uh oh, lost the phone. OK, hang on, hang on. There was a phone call coming in and that happens. I was trying to find it. <laughs> OK, we're going to do some pen work. I'm going to bring the camera down kind of low here so that you can see. So do you see what I mean? Like the, the wings kind of get lost and we want to put their little antenna back on here. Let's do this one down here first. Did I leave myself enough room? Yeah. Okay. You ready? All right. I'm going to keep it on this camera because I think it's going to be easier for you to see. So I'm going to take my pen and shakier. I like to do what I call a double trace. Do you see? I just did a double trace. So it's, you don't want your second trace right on top of the, of the top one, if that makes any sense. Because it takes the pressure off of everything having to be just so. And it looks so good. So we can draw a few little lines in here. It's really up to you. You just kind of, just kind of fudge in however you want them to be. Let's do a little bit of work here on these little feet. Again, just let it be kind of kind of fuzzy. It can be kind of squiggly around the bee. Do you see how that shows up so much better? And I'm using a small right now. So if you wanted it to be not even this this heavy, you could use the extra small. Um, I don't remember how they're little. Let me look at their let me look at the napkin here. So I remember how all that looked. Okay, they're pretty small. Okay, so basically it was just kind of going out with a little, weren't real big. There's that one. So let's come around and do this one. So this one, the wings are kind of up on top of each other. And just kind of that double trace. All right, let's do his little legs here. And then his were kind of coming down, kind of down like that. Look at that. 
So if you wanted to do any other pin work, you could, but do you see how now the wings don't blend in? We can really, really, truly see them. So pretty. If you wanted to do any pin work around um, the daisies, you could. I don't really think you need to because the daisies already kind of have their own pin work. Do you see? They kind of have their own pin work. So I don't know that that's really necessary to do. So I would stop right there. I think that looks really good. If you wanted anything to sparkle, you could come in and add some sparkle. If you want the bees to sparkle or the centers of the daisies to sparkle, you could do that. I'm going to leave mine natural. I kind of like the, the na more natural look, especially just for this particular napkin. I think it's really pretty, right? Isn't that pretty? Let's look over here on this side, this view. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's hold that crackle up where you can see it. So pretty. You can definitely see it better on this one. <laughs> I love it. All right. Let's go ahead and finish this project out. All right. You ready? Any questions on that? Pinmark is great to make things pop and it gives it that handmade kind of look and feel again. I just think it's just a really nice thing um, to do on your projects. Um, I, I love it. So you don't necessarily have to do pin work on everything. It's just when something like you you just want to accent something, right? You want something to stand out a little bit more. Okay, so I was kind of thinking about using this pretty little black and white check around my napkin here. Let me make sure my glue gun's turned on. Let's go back to this view. We're going to go ahead and just finish this, finish this beautiful thing out. All right, I'm going to start here on the bottom. And I usually start kind of on the side. And then I do what I call drizzle and drag. I am using a glue gun that has a micro tip. It has a very, very small tip. Okay, love that. It just helps control the amount of Mod Podge that I'm using. See, this is why I wanted to crackle the sides because I wanted some crackle to show. Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna put a little more here on this edge and then I'm gonna drizzle and I'm dragging the tip through the drizzle because I don't want it to be real lumpy and bumpy underneath my ribbon. And so I'm just gonna kind of treat it like a roadway, just going down. Um, one more thing I don't think I mentioned, the Country Chic paint, right? The chalk and mineral base paint, the kind that we sell, it has a sealer already in it. It has a sealer in it. So it takes about 48 hours to cure. That means harden. So for it to harden onto a surface it takes about 48 hours. I'm going to drag my tip through that. A little bit more here on the end. And then it's, it's weatherproof. So that's another nice little benefit. Alrighty, let's glue down this little edge right here. On the bottom. Now the back, if you wanna finish off the back, this is where you could, if you wanted to napkinize the back, you could actually have it be a double-sided project and put another napkin in here or something dimensional in here. Um, or if you just want to cover up the back, I would recommend just using a pretty scrapbook paper. Um, just cut it to the size you need. And I use a double sided tape. Score tape is actually what I use when I'm putting paper on the back of my canvases. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to stand this up because we need to make a pretty little bow, I think, to go on here. And because I want to kind of keep the natural look, I'm going to use some of this natural jute as well. So let's see, I'm going to start with a loop and another loop. I may not have enough on this. Yeah, I need a little more. Cut it a little too short. I'll use that on another project. Okay, hopefully I grabbed the one that's longer. Okay. 
So I'm going to start with a loop. And then another loop. I'm doing a double bow. Another loop. And another loop. So to see when you kind of pinch it all together. I think that's a that's a pretty good size actually right there. There's not wire in this ribbon. So I'm going to carefully just kind of lay it down. Ah, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, let me show you a tip. If you're having trouble holding something, you can use just a tiny drop of glue. Like let's make this loop. I'm just going to put in a tiny drop. Or you can even use like a clothespin. I have a clothespin over here too. I think I'll just grab that. So if you want to put, but don't make it be like a big, big drop of glue. Don't do that. So I'm just going to use my clothespin as my third hand here to hold this all together. Kind of put your clothespin pin off center, and then I'm just going to bring this around. Now I'm going to remove the clothespin because I want to make sure it's somewhat in the middle. Tie it off, and we're going to get a really pretty bow. Very, very cute. Okay. So you can kind of play around with it, but I love it because it, it keeps the loops get nice and full. Isn't that cute? Really, really cute on there. I like the black and white. So this is a project now that... Uh, Gosh, y'all, this is pretty for spring. It could be pretty for summer. Like, this is something I could have out um, for the whole next two seasons. I'm going to put a little dovetail, little what we call a flag end right here. I'm going to snip right up the center and then cut from the corner to the center and the other corner to the center. Perfect. Now let's glue this in place. So something else that's a little bit different that I do is when I put my bows on, I kind of put them on like they're standing. They're not flat. So I'm going to put my fingers. I like to put my fingers inside the loops. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of push down like this. So do you see how the, the bow is kind of facing forward? This is the front of my canvas. The bow is kind of facing forward. And if you'll stick your fingers in the loops like that, it really helps, right? See how it's facing forward? The loops stay up nice. Really, really cute. Let's do another little bow out of our jute. And you can decide how loopy you want that bow to be. And then I'm going to tie a little knot in the tail. See that pretty? It's so cute. This is what we call in the napkin club, we call this adding the frills. This is when you add the frills to your project. Some of you, if you're not a, do a bow person, you don't even have to put a bow on this. Like It's just pretty. It's pretty without it. But I just think it just accents it nicely. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Now, I need to probably, again, this is personal preference. Uh, I think I'm going to put something in the center of that bow. So I have a little bin over here. I used this flower actually last night on a project in my fabric club. So, like, there's this little daisy. If we wanted to go with the daisy theme, right, we could add a little daisy up there. If you don't want to go, if, you, if you're like, well, I don't want to compete with these pretty daisies, something else we could do is just put in some greenery, right? This is just like a sprig of greenery. Um, you can get little sprigs and little picks. And then what I do is just like this, I, I take them off, right? I'll cut a piece and then I just kind of take them off. So I think I'm going to go with greenery here. Um, and then I'm going to keep thinking about the center. 
This is uh, just a fun way to add a little life, right? To your project. Y'all still with me? I feel like I went a little long on this one. Okay, just putting down a, a little blob of glue. And then I'm just gonna put this sprig kind of where it's coming out. Be careful because you don't want your, you don't want to, you know, keep those, keep those loops up. Look how cute. Just having a little life up there, right? That's what spring is all about. Everything comes back to life. Colors come back out. And greens of any kind, they're just such a pretty natural look and feel. I love that. I'm going to add a couple more. That one's a little bit long. Let's make this one shorter. These are just, these are very simple. I think I got these at uh, Hobby Lobby. So this time, sorry, my glue gun. Ah, come on. Come on. I'm just going to put it on the stem here. And again, I'm just going to kind of tuck it, just kind of tuck it behind the bows, behind the loops of my bows here. Oh, I really like that. Do you see what I mean? Just adds a little nature. A little nature right there. If I had a little bee, that'd be really cute to actually put a little bee there in the center. But I don't. So what else could I do? I could do, I could just do a regular flower. Doesn't necessarily have to be a daisy. I'm going to try to keep it somewhat neutral. I don't know. What do you, did y'all like the daisy? Maybe I should just use the daisy. Where'd it go? What would you do? What would you do? The daisy's, it's pretty, but it's almost just a little too, too white for me. I'm kind of thinking about maybe bringing in a pop of color. Uh, let me see if I have some yellow somethings. Or maybe even just, maybe even going more with the natural. These are just natural, a natural brown wood button. Let's see what that looks like. Or a black button. I just don't want to compete with the daisies. That's kind of pretty. What do y'all think about that? Yeah, it could add nothing. I don't have any ladybugs here. I think for right now, I'm going to use this brown button. It could be a black button, but I kind of like kind of like the wood look. And with wood buttons, you can sand them. So let me sand this this guy. You see what I mean? Can sand him up. Let's put a little bit of jute. I might have to put some glue on the end of this. Thanks for hanging with me. I want it to look like it's part of the bow. So if you put a little bit of glue on the end of the jute and twist it, it kind of makes it like a needle. Really nice. Oops, strong. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm just going to have the jute running through the button, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie the tails. So I'll have a couple extra little jute tails here. So this turned out so cute, y'all. 
We are celebrating the onset of spring. Bring on spring. Yep, I like that. So again, a little blob of hot glue. Let me hold it just a second. I'll show it to y'all. See what you think. See, we just kind of kept that natural kind of look and feel. I really like it. I really like it. What do y'all think? Do you like it? <laughs> Let's look at it over here. I think it looks really cute. So if this is sitting right on something, um, if you had like a, like these, these are little candlestick holders. They've just been painted out white. See how cute that would be. So you could have them sitting on something to just to give it some levels. Um, I think it's actually really, really pretty. Look at that going around. And of course, if you were up close, you'd be seeing all of the crackle as well. Lots of texture, lots and lots and lots of texture on this project. <laughs> All right, do we get do we give it an A plus? I hope you give it an A plus. This was really really fun. Um, Yes, Deborah, I'm so glad. Yeah, it is fun to actually finish something out all the way and just show you kind of how I like to add the frills and, you know, or a bow technique or just all those things. So thank you so much for joining me for Craft and Chat today. I hope you enjoyed the, the tips. I hope you enjoyed the techniques. I'm super uh, excited for you guys to try Crackle. Um, try the Crackle Medium. Oh my gosh, it's just such a game changer when it comes to your projects and especially those of you that want to get into napkin art. Oh my goodness. Just so much fun. Okay. So much fun. I think